Minister, we now have to move to member statement. Member statement. The member for Windsor Tecumseh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'm delighted to rise in the House today to extend my sincere congratulations to the members of Municipal Council and School Board newly elected in the City of Windsor and the Town of Tecumseh. In the City of Windsor, Mayor Drew Dilkins, Councillors Fred Francis, Fabio Casante, Ronaldo Agassino, Mark McKenzie, Ed Sleeman, Joanne Jignac, Angela Mirnani, Gary Kashak, Kieran McKenzie, and Jim Morrison. In the Town of Tecumseh, Mayor Gary McNamara, Deputy Mayor Joe Bacchetti, Councillors Alicia Higgison, James Dorner, Rick Toniel, Brian Houston, and Tanya Jobin. At the Greater Essex County District School Board, trustees Connie Buckler, Sarah Sipkar, Kathy Cook, Gail Simcoe Hatfield, Kim McKinley, Christine, Christine Nelson, and Linda Chin. At the Windsor Essex Catholic District, District School Board, trustees Kim Bouchard, Mary Heath, Joe Iacono, uh, Jason Lazarus, Bernard Mastromati, and Fulvio Valentinus. Au Conseil scolaire catholique Provinos, les conseillers conseillères Christine Brooks, Janine Bridges, Jacques Kenny et Pauline Moret, au Conseil scolaire Via Monde, la conseillère Emmanuelle Richer. I want to acknowledge and thank every person who put their name on the ballot during this past municipal election. We in this House can truly relate to your experience, and we know you will all set a strong, strong foundation for serving our community well. Speaker, this past weekend along Young Street, Iranian community members, friends, family and allies from near and far stood together in solidarity, lining the streets in the name of justice. Justice for Maha Amini and justice for Iranian people everywhere. I witnessed the car horns, the chairs, the Iranian flags surfing the wind and chants for peace, freedom and democracy. I also witnessed the heavy hearts of people worried about their family and friends back home in Iran and abroad. Speaker, I stand in solidarity with women. I stand in solidarity with Iranian, Iranian women who advocate against the policing of women's bodies and are fighting for their right to choose what they wear, how they wear it, and when they wear it. I stand in solidarity with allies who recognize that to ensure the progress of all members of our communities, we must galvanize to ensure women's safety against all forms of violence. I stand in solidarity with the Iranian Canadians for Justice and Human Rights, a nonpartisan and non-religious organization of community activists, not to mention countless numbers of students who have organized peaceful protests for women's rights, justice and freedom from systemic oppression. Mas Masa Amini should be still on this earth. This 22-year-old Iranian woman was killed in her prime because the guidance patrol, Iran's morality police, didn't approve of how she wore her hijab. Mahas, Masa Amina and protesters before and after her across the globe who have been killed in pursuit of human rights should still be here. We must never forget. We can never forget our responsibility to stand against gender-based violence when it rears its deadly patriarchal Thank you. Members, statement. Thank you. The time is run out. Thank you. Members, statement. The member for Dura. Thank you, Speaker. Much like uh, the member for Windsor Tecumseh, I too wish to congratulate uh, many uh, of the all the candidates and those elected or re-elected in municipal elections across Ontario, but in particular in my riding of Durham, in the municipalities of Clarington, Oshawa, and Scugog. Congratulations to Clarington Mayor Adrian Foster, who is re-elected to another term, and congratulations to regional councillors Granville Anderson and Willie Wu, and the ward councillors Sammy Elijah. Lloyd Rang, Karina Trail, and Margaret Zwart. In Oshawa, I congratulate re-elected Mayor Dan Carter and Councillors Robert Chapman and Rosemary McConkie and the other elected and re-elected councillors. In the township of Scugog, we have retiring May Mayor Bobby Drew being replaced by incoming Mayor Wilma Watton, and I recognize regional councillor Ian McDougall and local councillors David Leroy, Jana Guido, Robert Rock and Harold Wright and Terry Coyne elected in Ward 5. I congratulate all the trustees elected and re-elected to our public and Catholic boards in the riding, and I convey my gratitude and admiration for all who stood for public office in these past municipal elections in Clarington, Oshawa and Scugog. This is what makes our democracy strong when good citizens come forward and put their names on the ballot and debate thoughtfully with fellow citizens. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statement, the member for Fanshawe. 
Thank you, Speaker. Today, it's my honour to talk about an amazing organization operating in London Fanshawe. This past summer, I had the honour of touring the Wright Clinic, a dental clinic founded by Dr. Ken Wright and the London Community Dental Alliance, to provide affordable dental care to low-income individuals and families. Dr. Wright's vision for this clinic started many years ago when he saw the need in our community for affordable dental care. Operating out of the Glen Care Community Resource Centre, the clinic is able to serve some of the most vulnerable members of our community. While social assistance programs often cover provide coverage for dental care, allotments fall short of most fees. The Wright Clinic offers truly affordable care regardless of resources. This clinic is one of a kind model, able to hire a full-time staff and supplement their services through volunteer dentists and hygienists. The clinic also works with Western University and Fanshawe College students, giving them valuable training opportunities. This model of service is what Compassion Care looks like. The Wright Clinic is a testament to the power of community and what can be done to accomplish this through vision, determination and cooperation. This clinic is a beacon of hope to many who have previously believed oral care was beyond their reach. I am so proud to have this dental care clinic in my community. Congratulations, Wright Clinic. Member Statements, the member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I'm extremely excited to share with you that after the long period of isolation and concerns, Markham Unionville has seen a very active, lively, and festive October. One of the highlights being the first downtown Markham charity exotic car show, where many sponsors, philanthropies, and abundant spectators has come together for a great cause. The event was a great success. It raised $50,635 to support the Sick Kid Foundation for their new hospital and patient support buildings. We hope that more children will get better treatments and live their happy lives they deserve. I'm extremely proud of Speed Stars and Saturn Drivers Drives for organizing this event. This highly appreciated event look, took place in our downtown Markham, where we celebrate Canada Day on July 1st and now showcase some of the world's greatest sports cars and classics. That afternoon, I saw many cars lovers with their own whole family come and enjoy seeing those unique and beautiful vehicles up close. Speaker, I'm very proud of Markham Unionville communities coming together to help one another and to help build a more resilient, more cohesive, and more caring Ontario. I cannot emphasize enough that Ontario is indeed a world of experiences, and I feel that Markham Unionville is a part of such. What a fast and fabulous experience. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Social assistance recipients in Ontario deserve to live with dignity, but the current rates do not reflect this. Constituents across my riding have shared their stories with my office about their experience living on social assistance. One family granted me the permission, and I'd like to share uh, their story. It's a parent and their child, and they're both currently living on ODSP. And they told me how their monthly income is impossible to live on. This is some of their stories. I've had to borrow money to buy groceries or meds or food for my cats. I cannot pay everything all in one month. Another one, I cannot pay any of my bills in full each month or I would not be able to put food on the table every day. People on ODSP cannot move in with their boyfriends or girlfriends or their ODSP will be cut drastically or eliminated altogether. So someone on ODSP cannot move in with their partner or marry them if they make more money than the ODSP gives them monthly. We deserve to be able to hold our heads up high and be proud of our lives. With the amounts people get right now, we all feel like dogs, begging for scraps at the feet of people in charge. It's degrading and pointless for anyone to feel like this in their life. That is their quotes. This family story is not alone. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Their voices need to be heard. And today, we need to make the decision, you need, the government needs to make the decision to double the rates for OW and ODSB. Again, I'll remind members to make their comments through the chair, not directly across the floor of the House. 
Next, the member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we approach Remembrance Day, I am honoured to rise to recognize the men and women who sacrificed so much for our freedom and democracy we enjoy today. I would like to thank the Royal Canadian Legion members and volunteers, not only in my riding of Halliburton Court, the Lakes Brock, but those all across our country for their time and effort spent supporting veterans, their families, and our local communities. In my riding, there are 16 legions who look after 21 cenotaphs. This year, the Sir, the Sir Sam Hughes Legion Branch 67 of Lindsay and the Sunderland Legion Branch 141 of Brock Township are celebrating the 100th anniversary of their cenotaphs. Wow. Cenotaphs are important historical symbols as they represent those that died in war that are buried where they fell. They stand as a reminder of our commitment to honouring the sacrifices of brave men and women in the Canadian Armed Forces. During World War I, there was great emphasis on communities large and small. Everyone knew someone or a family whose members were overseas. They were local farmers, school teachers, shop owners, fathers and sons that headed to the front lines to fight for everyone. While back at home, these communities supported the efforts, with women working the farms, the factories, knitting socks, making bandages and pajamas and quilts, writing letters and cards with the support of the Women's Institute and the Red Cross. Let us take time to remember all those who served and continue, continue to serve our country this November, lest we forget. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Don Valley West. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to speak on behalf of the many residents of Don Valley West who have contacted me to ask this government to reverse course on two bills. Last week, they were asking this government to reverse course on a housing bill that could see many residents who rent in Don Valley West lose their apartments if Bill 23 is enacted as is. This week, they are writing to say, what can we do to stop Bill 28 and protect the wages of education workers, many of whom care for our kids every day for less than 40000 a year, and their charter right to bargain? which this government will simply punch out by using their version of the easy button, the notwithstanding clause. Speaker, Ontarians, including the workers employed by this government in our schools and hospitals, many of whom are women, are struggling with an affordability crisis. Yet this government is more focused on fighting them fighting with workers than addressing the issues, using easy tactics like writing $100 checks instead of working hard to strike a deal, which would help workers' families cope with inflation. The government's strategy is to spend millions of taxpayer, millions of taxpayer money dollars in, to fight in court instead of talking at the bargaining table, while the province records a $2 billion surplus. The finance minister talked yesterday about the need to be prudent. Of course we need to be prudent with taxpayer money. But prudent doesn't mean unfair. Not paying education workers a fair wage hurts them and their families. We've seen the crisis created by this government by not paying nurses fairly, which caused a shortage of them. Let's not repeat that with education workers. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Flamborough Glanbrook. Thank you, and good morning, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to take this time to congratulate the recipients of this year's Hamilton 40 Under 40 Business Achievement Awards. This program celebrates the accomplishments of 40 young adults who have demonstrated an exceptional level of success in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. 40 Under 40 is one of Hamilton's most prestigious business awards. These recipients are role models for business and the community at large. They have shown an exceptional level of accomplishment in their respective fields. They have demonstrated an extraordinary level of success and leadership within their workplace. Throughout the pandemic, these young entrepreneurs faced challenges and proved they could overcome some difficult obstacles. They've shown resilience, tenacity, strength, and community spirit. It's an extraordinary accomplishment to receive a Hamilton 40 Under 40 Business Achievement Award. And that is why I am so proud to tell you that one of this year's recipients is a young woman named Rachel Green, who owns and operates two successful businesses in Hamilton. She is a mom, entrepreneur, and philanthropist, and she is my daughter-in-law. Congratulations to all.
Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Oakville North, Burlington. Speaker, seven confirmed deaths in Ontario in September, six confirmed deaths in August, four confirmed deaths in July, 41 confirmed since November 2021. These are the women in Ontario who have died of femicide each month, the intentional killing of women or children, as recorded by the Ontario Association of Interval and Transition Houses. About one in three women in the world and one in three in Canada will be physically or sexually abused by their partner in their lifetime. Every woman and every girl deserves to live in safety, with dignity, free from intimidation and the threat of violence. That is why our government is investing $198 million for victims of violence and $11 million for violence prevention initiatives. We are taking action as we should but we must do more. Violence against women and girls comes in many forms. All of us, particularly those in charge of keeping us safe, need to understand the dangers and the signs of abuse. Yes, violence against women can be physical or sexual, but it can also include threats, coercive control, or intimidation. We must listen to the evidence of abused women and take them seriously. November is Women Abuse Prevention Month, and if we as a society and those in charge of keeping us safe don't understand the signs or the forms it takes, then we cannot bring the violence to an end. concludes our member statements for this morning. I beg to inform the House that pursuant to Standing Order 9G, the Clerk has received written notice from the Government House Leader indicating that a temporary change in the weekly meeting schedule of the House is required, and therefore the afternoon routine on Wednesday, November 2, 2022, shall commence at 1 p.m.